Reforming health care, a top priority for President-elect Donald Trump. He held meetings yesterday with the leaders of major hospitals across the country and former Health and Human Services Secretary Tommy Thompson. But the pressure is on to make a campaign promise reality. Joining me now is Texas Congressman Michael Burgess, who was a practicing physician before going to Washington. Uh, how difficult of a task is this going to be, sir? Well, well it's incredibly difficult, but it's so important. And really no sane person thinks the status quo with the Affordable Care Act is something that can be or or should be maintained. Uh, what happens next is likely going to happen in, in several sequential steps, the first being a budget resolution coming out of the Senate, which will take big pieces of the Affordable Care Act away. I think that's critical. I know people are nervous about that. I think that's critical, though, to get people back in the room and talking about what happens next? The problem you have right now is people can't get the insurance. It's too expensive. They can't use it after they get it. Uh, Bill Clinton, of all people, summed it up perfectly when he said, you have a crazy system. You're paying twice as much for half the benefit. Yeah, remember That's that That's what's going to stop. Um, it is, the Wall Street Journal is taking aim at the incoming administration on overhauling this legislation. The editorial board uh, writing, quote, if Republicans don't repeal Obamacare immediately, the danger is that the natural inertia of Congress takes over and nothing changes. But the more time they put between repeal and replace, the more the danger will grow. Congressman, do you think the changes will actually get done? I do, and that's why, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand why it has to happen on a budget resolution that comes from the Senate as the first thing that occurs, but because of the rules of the Senate and their, their 51 votes that's required to pass a budget resolution puts this within the realm of possibility. And actually, this in this instance, I do agree with the Wall Street Journal. Something does need to happen quickly. It is critical that the momentum that was established in the November election be capitalized upon. And that's the, the reconciliation instructions that will come from the Senate. And our committee in, in Energy and Commerce needs to be prepared to act on those very quickly, shortly after the new president is sworn in. It's going to be tough work. It, there's there's days that it's going to be people are going to wonder why in the world did they take this on. But it is so critical. It is so critical. And it, it has to happen. And one of the things I've been doing these couple of weeks being home here is talking to my counterparts in the in the state legislature and the state Senate. It, they are going to need to be ready for the changes, which, yeah. quite frankly, well, they have been asking for the changes in Medicaid that are likely going to come in, in this new in this new term. Well, but if you talk about the momentum from the election to now, Trump has said he's going to keep some of the things since then. Uh, you know, like the um, the being you know able to stay in your parents' insurance. Not that that's necessarily bad, but it doesn't sound like there's going to be a complete overhaul, or that's what even what they're going for. Right, in the pre-existing pre-existing condition, pre yes. Right. Right. Yeah, re real realistically, the the pre-existing condition argument, while it's important, most people in the United States of America today are still covered in the large group mon market under ERISA-based plans, where pre-existing conditions were really were not the issue. Right. Pre-existing conditions existed in the individual market, and that's where the reform should have taken place, but it was never as large a population as, as the Democrats portrayed it. It still requires a fix, and in uh, uh, my discussions with uh, my state senators, that likely could occur at the state level to provide that protection for people with pre-existing conditions, and appropriately, mm -hmm. I think the states should take a, a, a larger role in providing health care to their citizens. Uh, Michael Block has a question.